What's up guys and welcome back to the episode of the EAFC career mode, it's episode number 17, massive loss in the last game away against Brentford but of course before that finally getting another win against Aston Villa means that right now with 14 games to go we're still in the bottom three but with some really favourable fixtures coming today and I'm going to try and get through as many as I can. We gotta make sure we take advantage of this in a make or break episode of Toffees, Barra, West Ham, the Blaze, the Canaries as well. We're gonna try and get through all these games, plus the FA Cup last 16, host of Newcastle United as well. So, loads of games, let's just get straight to it. First game, Everton home, looking to bounce back here and get a big three points and back to back wins at Kenilworth Road. Let's get it done. So, you might have noticed, Boss almost ready to return. Not just yet, though. Not just yet. Still carrying a slight knock. I said one more game on the sidelines, mate. And uh, we'll get you back in that team, because Lord knows we have missed him. It's great work from Lockyer there. And O'Hare has done even better. He's done brilliantly. And it's a really good chance here. Cox is playing through the middle in this game. He slid through out of bio, and what a chance. Oh, for, why can't my defenders make last these tackles like that? Chevalier denies the second attempt and put behind for a corner. Oh, and it drops just wide. Everton haven't really had an answer for our defence. Don't get to say we've had tight defence many times, so at the moment I've got to be pleased with it. But we all know it just takes the one chance for the AI compared to the multiple for us. But at the moment we're defending from the front and Everton don't have an answer for that. Here's O'Hare with Sessignon to beat. And he Roberts on the overlap, please. And instead he's found out a bio. Golden chance. It's Elijah. Can he finish? No! The goal drought continues, couldn't hit the target. Still no no. I just cannot keep my composure at all. We get the chances, but I just don't finish them. I need a strike with like 88 finishing, so it means that even when I get the direction horribly wrong, it still has a chance of clipping the far post and dropping in, you know? That's what I need. Like a pure clinical goal scorer. I've been playing really well in this game here though. Like seriously, I'll be disappointed if I can't find a goal to get in front. Cox has done well to beat his man. Oh, referee. We'll have the free kick there, please. Ref. We'll have the free kick there. That's got to be at least a book in as well, surely. Thank you. Yeah, that free kick came to nothing in the end. And Oh, Murich, well done, mate. I know I slagged you off in the last episode after that goal we conceded against Villa, but that's a good save there. It's been all looting in this game. We fume if we don't win this game. A chance for a break here. Cox. Yes! Dips for weeks on end and then comes back when we need him most. And a bio puts us in front, makes amends for the earlier miss. And Luton maybe set for back to back wins at Kenilworth for a great hold up play by Duke. Cox through the gap, threading the needle. And out of bio slots it past Chevalier. Hatters in front. Come on, you hatters. We deserve this. We deserve this. Duke has been very aggressive today. He's found out a bio. And this has got to be two. He's in behind. It's Elijah for a brace. For the points. For a place in my starting 11 next week. And possibly for Luton to escape with the bottom three. Comes back when we need him most. This is why as well. Like when you do come off a loss... You've got to see and analyse how you played in it. Because if you played well and you're just unlucky not to get anything, you've got to give yourself some credit. And don't be too harsh on yourself, man. Like, you've done all you could do, you know? Don't be harsh on yourself. All your boys lose motivation. It's like a boy -o! could have had his hat-trick. And Chevalier prevents it. But instead, take the positives. It was just one of those days, one of those things. Lessons for life, man. If you've put the work in, you've been unlucky, you've just come up short. Don't be too critical on yourself, man. Take the positives and learn from the experience. Take that loss and the hurt into the next one. We've done just that. Luton back-to-back -back wins at home. Two wins in three. And surely escaping the bottom three as well. Massive win. Right now, two-point gap, 13 games to go. If we can beat the Borough in our next one away at the Riverside, that to me is the game of the season that. And just before we play it, scouting update and academy update as well. So I'm going to be a bit quicker with the scouting now, guys. And basically, if we, uh, 
if we have a player that I'm going to continue scouting, I'll show him. If we put a player in the academy, I'll show you him as well. But otherwise, just to make this quicker, I'm going to reject players off camera just to speed this up a bit. Well, there is one player that is definitely going to make it. Max Malinowski. Five for eight. Looks like a defensive player with a 1.9 mil valuation already. Let's, um... Let's um, let's promote uh, one of our lower rated players. And again, I, I know because when you do promote players come the end of the season or in the second half of the season, they're likely to have a potential downgrade next year. So to play it safe, what we'll do is we'll, we'll promote a couple of the, uh, the lower rated players with lower potential. Meaning if they do have a potential downgrade, it's not a big loss. We can just go ahead and sell them for pennies next season. But Max looks good to be fair. I want him in the academy. And from Norway, so far, no one making the cut this month, but he does look pretty decent, and I'll continue to scouting on him just for now. So, uh, that means our academy is now looking like this. Um, yeah, pretty solid. So, I think, yeah, again, from now on, what I'm going to do is, if we do have uh, a full academy and we either need to release or promote, what I'm going to do is promote one of the lower-rated and perhaps lower-potential players and that way, if we do have to sell them in the summer, then so be it. It's not a big loss. At least we'll get a few pennies. Right. Following game. Let's just crack straight on. Borough away, Riverside. Potentially the game of the season in a basement battle down the bottom of the table. Both of us are out of the bottom three with 13 games to not get to go. But no, a win would be huge. Haven't won away in God knows how long. We put out of the bag in the northeast when it matters most. Come on, Luton Town. Barkley back on the bench for this one. He's still got the uh, the plaster next to his name. So for those that don't play career mode, basically, uh, if a player has the plaster next to his name, it means that he's carrying a knock. So he can play, but the likelihood is if he does get an injury, it's going to be another serious one and not just like a five-day bruise, for example. So, oof. so I'd rather not risk Barkley if need be until he's fully healthy and ready to go. But considering what happened in the reverse fixture, if you remember when the Borough Kane and Kenilworth right, we did nothing. And then in the 90th minute, he just levered one in for about 25 yards. And boss, get warming up already, son, because I might need you again. We are so rubbish away from home, honestly. We've only won one time all season long. The rest of our wins coming at Kenilworth Road. When we are at home, I fancy our chances of getting a point against anyone. When we're away, we can't win to save our lives. Awful. Chance here though, as Charles is cut inside. Just couldn't release the ball though. But that's a shocking throw. The camera have a dig with the keeper not set. Oh! Yeah, it's yours. Well done, Connor. Well done. Cox. Duke. Out of bio. Yes! First goal of the season for our new number 10. 11 million pounds spent on deadline day. It might prove to be a very wise investment. Celebrates in front of the travelling Tangerine Army. Luton have their level up. Using that pace in behind, fires home 1-1. One, one. I think it's going to do it for the first half. Oh, 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 ref, are you really going to blow for half time now? We've got two men that are going to make the tackle there in Cox and Adebayo. And we're going to go for a one-on-one -on -one there. That's really unlucky. Put put it behind you, boys. Half's over. Can't do anything now. Get down that dressing room. Second half to begin. We can go and win this, you know. I think that's going to do it until... <gasps> I just couldn't get enough of the ele 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 elevation. Ele ele elevation. <laughs> elevation on the ball over the top. Missed opportunity right there. It's a decent point away considering our waveform. If I get the right elevation, Cox is in, I can cut that back. It's a point. It's a point. We don't see the borough get ahead of us, and it stops our away record being shocking. We will take it. Right, following game in the week, Newcastle home in the FA Cup last 16. If we go through, it's amazing. And I do have some stars out there, but if we go out, I won't be too disappointed. I'm really focused on the Premier League right now, trying to pull away from the bottom three. Most crucially tonight, though, Barkley back in the starting eleven for the first time since injury. Let's get a full 90 under his belt. Kraft into Politano, Longstaff. Oh, Murich. Well, he's one of the stars out there tonight, but he's not really covered himself in much glory. Unless unless I didn't see that right initially, I really think Muriel should be stopping that. He's had an okay season. He's got seven clean sheets on the board in the Premier League, but he's letting a lot of goals where I think, you know, if that was me against the opposition, I mean, you would have seen it in the last season against Brentford. The shot's probably saved, you know. But for me, my goalkeeper, yeah... 
yeah, that's me shooting at Nick Pope. I think that's safe pretty comfortably, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? But if it's me requiring a goalkeeper to bail me out, uh, sometimes, but not very often. Sometimes, but not very often. Like me trying to get a match on Tinder. Right, here we go. Mag posing for a second goal here. Roll back to the edge. Kefren to Ram. Shot deflected. Hit someone in the face. Follow-up shot blocked. And will just about escape. Still. No. Bottom corner. Try to pass out from the back. Gave it away. Anthony Gordon makes it too. F forget the FA Cup, man. It's all about the league. Oh, no, 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 no. Free. Okay, all right, it doesn't matter. Cup, cup is nice, but we're far more focused on the league. Massive game on the weekend. Write this one off. Oh, Barkley, well done. And, oh. Could have at least been a goal back on his comeback day, but he's rusty. He's missed two and a half months of football. It's going gonna, it's gonna to take a while for him to return back to boss mode. But uh, couldn't even hit the target. Precision finishing, man. So tough. If you're not playing with it, give it a go. It's hard. As orange seats clatter back to the back of themselves. The Luton fans had already left in their droves when we went 3-0 down. But I think they all know that we got far bigger fish to fry. Eddie outside can take the quarterfinal place. We're looking to consolidate a Premier League place. Yep, following game, back to matters in the league as we take on West Ham at Kenilworth Road. Well, we haven't actually lost in the Premier League since the start of December, so a golden chance here to get our third win in a row at home in the league and a big three points that will see us rise to a season-high 14th place. Massive game here. I'm quite liking this, uh, this supporting trio as well of Cox through the middle, O'Hare on the right with a weak foot he's got and a pace as well. And then Duke, who's been signed to be a striker, but instead he's looking like a decent inside forward. Get a shot on target. Test Areola early. That's what you want to do. Even if you're not going to score, at least test the keeper early and let him know you're here. Good start. Five minutes in. Already a shot on target. And now, let's get our first goal. Yeah, far better at home than we are away. Never mind that 3 0 loss to the Magpies in the cup. Far better when teams have to come here to the awkward, unorthodoxed, but at times intimidating Kenilworth Road. Ballard does well to control that and therefore keep hold of possession as well. With our hair down the right, if I play this correctly... Oh, okay, it's fine. Joe Cox with the acrobatic scores against the club that released him as a teenager. They said he was too small. They said he was too weak. They said he was too short. I said he's a short king. He's just drilled us into a one goal lead, beats Ariola for power, and gives Luton Town the lead at Kenilworth Road. What a strike! By the number 27. Oh, oh, they're okay with that. For a second there, Antonio Silva and Tyler Kerr looked as though they didn't want the ball between them. And that's a shocking pass that as you hit it. Let's go around the Kenilworth Road as we lead by one and start off strong. Here's Ryan Giles through the gap to Duke. Lovely one, two between the pair. And Abayo's in the middle and he's saying, look at me, look at me. And we have looked at him. And he's rolled it back to Cox for his second, no! Just sliced it ever so slightly off that right boot. And behind for a goal kick. Excellent start, though. I mentioned before, but like to me, players should be able to get like upgrades during a season. Do you know what I mean? Because it would happen in real life. Like, Joel's got six goals. He's a kid. He's still a teenager, and he's doing this in the Premier League. And yet, he's only going up very gradually by one. Whether I've got development plans on or not, it doesn't really matter at this point. It's still very gradual growth. Players should be allowed a little mid-season upgrade if they've warranted, or at the very least, a post-season upgrade, surely. And a chance here for a breakaway. Out of bio to Duke, he's got the pace. Across comes Tyler Kera. Nakamba and Areola pushes it behind. It's fine. Didn't use that pace very well there, but it did win us a corner. And we are good in the air as Joel delivers to Adebayo heads wide. Easy. 
Easy. Easy. Oh, I thought he was going to pass. Oh, no, 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 there's a free man. What a block. What a block. I don't know who that was, but what a block. And a boy just hoofing the touch, mate. Bars a few seconds. Was that Kilman? I think it was. Oh, it was. Max Kilman. What a signing he's been from Wolves, man. Okay, shut down my read valve. It does get it through the gap to Mohamed Kudus, who skips away from Alan Campbell. And this is their last chance. Yeah, Zamari Bell. Who fits on? Yes. Free on the chop. Free on the chop. But let's keep it calm. Three straight wins at Kenilworth Road. I said this episode will be the make or break one. And Kenilworth Road has turned into a fortress right when we needed it most. If we won away this season, if we won away, I don't think we have. I don't think we have, you know. I think I think all of our... I oh know, Villa Park. Yeah, of course. That's the only away day win we've had all season long, I think. Aston Villa. I, I wish I could play them every week, man, because we always beat them. So that means now in the tables, we get through Sunday and advance through to the Blades game. We're up to a season-high 14th, but it's not over yet. We're still only four... Oh, we're still only four points clear. If you want to see the, uh, the Academy Conference League round of 16, guys, here it is. Just thought I'd include this for you there. Totally intentional. If you... <laughs> If you want to see the bottom three right now, which is a bit more important to us, Bournemouth and Palace both have games now, and that is quite big right now. So it's big, it's free on the shot at home, but it's still far from over 11 games remaining. And also, guys, do you remember in the last episode when I said if you made it this far, can you comment, what are those? Um, today, can you comment, hashtag conference league is massive. <laughs> I want to see how many of you stayed to this point, man. The Conference League is massive. Let me know in the comments. You know the score. Right, following game, uh, Blades away. Brown will lane struggling. Bottom of the table right now. Massive basement battle. And whilst we have won two of our last three in the league, our away form speaks for itself. Huge game here. Is anyone listening to the, uh, the Peter Crouch podcast this season? Puddings is massive. <laughs> it's so funny. I, um, I took my mum for dinner. <laughs> couple nights ago uh, she came up to visit me and we went out for dinner and literally when the waiter said do you have room for dessert I was like I was so tempted to say oh you know pudding's just massive but I didn't I bit my tongue I should have done it I should have done it past the pod man went in the camber and oh Duke well done just stood his ground there didn't need to dive in Cox has one man to be Duke oh Stanek pushes it behind. I can't believe I almost pulled that off. I'm not going to say it was intentional, but it looked amazing. And a boy! Oh, look at the tangerine limbs in the away end. And a boy! Oh, heads in the corner. Coming into form in clutch time. Luton leading Yorkshire. Oh, hey! <laughs> Still leading by one. Luton have got their groove back, man. It's been a long time coming. That signing of Duke has helped a lot. And just having Barkley around the boys again on the training ground, I'm sure, too. And, of course, that guy finally starting to score again. <laughs> 45 minutes away from our second away day victory of the season. And it would be a massive one. Dude, that's yours, mate. Yeah, went in, went in. And Cox also puts a foot in and does well. Oh, scramble. Scramble. And George Bulldog does well on Duke there. But Stanis got to be careful. Oh, surely. Yes! The play is trying to pass out from the back. But you ain't Edison. You ain't Allison. You're Stanek, mate. Know your level. Absolute calamity. In the Sheffield United six-yard area, shades of Zach Steffen in the FA Cup semi. And Adebayo, hustling Malik, wins it back and flicks it in. Luton Town two up. And the pressure, the relentless pursuit of more, pays off. 
for surely our second away day victory of the season. Massive! If you put the hard work in, you will get rewarded for it in time. I am a firm believer of that. It might take a while, but eventually you'll get your reward and you'll reap the benefit of it as well. I really do believe that. For every walk of life, that's true. I really feel it. And for Luton Tower, a hard-working team out of possession. We press, we put players under pressure, and we've just got our reward for that work ethic as well. That's why I love that high defensive work rate. It means those players press aggressively and with the full capacity of pace as well. Anyway, hair down the right. Just going to get away from Trusty, but right now leading by two. It's ours to throw away from this position. Giles, well done, mate. And look at Cox in space there. And what a chance for a breakaway. For a third, a quick, incisive Luton counter-attack should result in a third. And it didn't because I've played the wrong pass, but it's not going to matter. Only one of us survives this year. And guys, I ain't going to let it not be us. We both kept our heads above water last season. But I think only one of us will save off the relegation this year. Massive, 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 massive. Just like puddings. Huge three points. Come on, Luton. I knew this was the run. Like, I, I knew this was the run of games where we can make or break our entire season. Because if you look at what's coming in April, Liverpool, Man City, Spurs, Chelsea, and Manchester United are our next five games. So I knew this was the run which we had to capitalise on. And we have. I still feel we could pick up maybe one win in these five here. And based on our record against Man City, and to be fair, Chelsea as well, you wouldn't put it against us. But uh, I say against Chelsea, we're only beating them once. But even so, even so. So, yeah, uh, we'll take a look at the standings real quick then. Ten games to go in the season before those fixtures. Should I do one more? I was going to end on that, but let's, let's do one more. Because if we do win it, that'll take us up to 34 points. We could potentially be 10 clear of Bournemouth. And realistically, I'd say from that position... One more winning nine will be enough. Let's let's do one more. And you'd love to see Ryan Giles and Max Kilman get caught up. How good has Kilman been for me this year, man? Seriously. Club record signing are worth every penny. We do see here four youth players are unsettled. So frustrating because even though the board say in the email, apparently he thinks he's ready to be caught up to the senior squad. He seems determined to leave at the moment, but I think I can persuade him to hold off for a little while before cancelling his youth contract with us. It doesn't do anything. Like, it's just a pointless, pointless email, that, because it doesn't do anything. So I know that these players will have potential drops in the sun because I've promoted them now, but unfortunately, it's out of my own hands. I either let them go on freeze, or I put them in the first team and risk a potential drop. And for the players like Declan Fletcher, who look so good, I've got to do it, you know? Reese Baker's the other one. Where's he? There he is, right back, 79.85. You have to put him in the first team as well. And the others were Ruben West and Marcus Allen. Don't even see them. There they are. Marcus Allen. Oh, great potential on this young fullback here. Definitely needs a pro deal. And where's Ruben West? Uh, yeah, not too bad. 82 88. But uh, a low overall to begin with. So that's the one thing that really frustrates me. You know, I mentioned before, I wish you could talk to your players. I wish you could talk to your youth players as well and just say, guys, we're on the best run of the season here. Like, don't kick up a fuss now. <laughs> come on. Wait until the end of the season you'll get a pro deal for the start of next year. But now? Come on. So England scouting has come to an end. No one else made the cut. Johan Hansen is going to get an academy scholarship, though, with a really good overall there. Uh, I think, I unless it's like a superstar here, I'm not going to give anyone else a pro deal, though. He could be all right. I like the name to be fair. Virgo Jacobson. It's not bad, is it? But, um... Yeah, I think that might do it for us. As for Poland, oh yeah, he, he deserves one. And uh, anyone else? Any more for any more? Definitely. Uh, Pol Poland's been a very good place to scout. Props to you guys. To be fair, do you know what? Props to, props to you guys, because he, he's going to make it as well. Props to you guys, because you said Poland and Norway. I've scouted them both, and they've both been brilliant. Um, yeah, let, let's, let's, I'll tell you what, let's, let's promote Dalton and we'll, we'll look to sell him in the summer if he, if we can't loan him out and, oh, someone else. <laughs> yeah, I think actually Pavlovsky because the, um, the potential is not great anyway, to be fair. So put him in the first team. And so there we go as the scouting comes to an end. Oh, relentless on this guy as well. Max Malinovsky comes to an end. The academy now looking like this. I'll, I'll set these development plans off camera, but, um, 
yeah, few few good new pickups to the uh, to the academy here. Another new good batch of uh, youngsters coming through. Right, final game, boys. Looking for our fourth win in six games. Unlikely to get it though. Trip to the northwest as we face Liverpool at Anfield. You know how it goes. A point in this game will be a brilliant result for us. Let's see if we can get it. Yeah, Rich under a bit of pressure. But to be fair, what a kick. And that's when the 87 kicking comes in handy. Almost led to a brilliant counter to O'Hare. And there is a chance for a counter here again. Distracted Allison, possibly, but he didn't put Joel Cox off. He's just converted home from a tight angle and given us the lead at Anfield. What a finish! Last chance for Liverpool. There's not enough time, surely. Ref, where's the final whistle? There it is. There it is. Luton Town have won their third in a row. Best run of four of the season. We've come to Bramwell Lane, and then Anfield have come out with a win. I think for sure now, just like last season, can you say deja vu? A big win away against the top six side means destiny is in our own hands. What a game winner from the King. And for those curious on the short King, he's now 70 rated. Eight goals in 24 for the teenage wonder kid. And on the shadow striker development plan, he may well have just fired us in the most important game winner of this season. But that will end today's episode of the EAFC Karuma, guys. So massive thank you for watching. I really hope you have enjoyed it. If you have done, please do drop a like. So you'll have a fantastic day. I'll return in the next one up to a season high 13th place with nine games remaining. Currently, nine clear of the bottom three. It's not over yet. But I would say for sure two more wins and maybe even just one win and a draw or two and we'll be safe for another year. Have a fantastic day, much love to you all and I'll see you for the penultimate episode of Season 2, A Chance to Survive once again. It feels like deja vu very soon.